journeyed beyond knowledge, beyond reason, to a land we call the future. In the 16th century, he was certainly the most famous of the prophets. And today, 400 years later, we still heed his words. He foretold with crystal clarity the history of mankind before it happened. For a prophet to be as famous worldwide, centuries after he lived, shows that there must be something there. He has come to symbolize the occult, the fantastic, but he was very real. His mission was to warn us of many of the dire things he foresaw in coming human race. He was Nostradamus. Beyond what is known lies an unexplored world of shadows and phantoms. A land that knows no limits of time or space. From the dawn of discovery to the nightfall of catastrophe. Journey to a universe of the unexplained, the unforeseen, the unbelievable. A place beyond reality where no question will go unanswered. A place where myth and legend are law. Superstition of science. It's time for our journey to begin. gazed into a future that has become our present and our past. Nostradamus, the great prophet. Knowledge surrounds these library walls. And with these instruments, that knowledge can be ours. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, how like a god. William Shakespeare wrote those words in the late 16th century, a few years after the death of Michel de Nostradame, a French physician. Those beautiful words are appropriate. The legend of Nostradamus should be treated factually for the fantastic elements of his life need no embellishment. Born in December of 1503 in France, he studied to become a physician. He first came to prominence during a plague where his unorthodox medical advice allegedly cured entire cities. He married, had two children, but saw them carried away by another plague. After this tragedy, Nostradamus settled down in Salon, France, and began to experience mystical visions that would turn him into a legend even in his own time. In 1555, he wrote the first of a series of verse predictions called The True Centuries. These 354 verses, called quatrains, have ensured Nostradamus's immortality, and they have been in print for over 400 years translated and scrutinized for new meanings and insights. He died in 1566, and though he achieved celebrity in his lifetime, it was in death that he would become legend, for his words would live on through history, even change history. Nostradamus lived in a turbulent era in fear of his life, for prophecy was considered a black art. So his prophetic verses, collected in books like these, were written in code, leaving future generations to decipher their meaning. Many of these prophecies have come to pass. One of the prophet's earliest predictions concerned the French king, Henry II. Nostradamus divined that Henry, the young lion, 
would be pierced through one eye in a jousting accident. And that is exactly what happened in 1559. Nostradamus foresaw that the people living in Paris would be stirred up against their king. A revolution that occurred in the French capital 200 years later. A revolution detailed in verses like these. The queen sent to death by judges chosen by lot. Was this the justice meted out to Marie Antoinette, justice by mob and guillotine that also took the life of her son? Nostradamus not only foretold the rise of the Italian-born Napoleon, the self-proclaimed emperor who conquered much of Europe through a series of bloody military campaigns, but he also saw the coming of Adolf Hitler, born in Austria of poor parents, a man whose speeches mesmerized the multitudes of Germany. A great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt, and a great man was struck down in broad daylight in a place called Dallas. Nostradamus also wrote that another falls at night time, and this too came to pass. He will come to take himself to the corner of Luna, where he will be taken and placed on alien land. How could Nostradamus have predicted these astonishing events? There are several theories about where Nostradamus attained his powers. Nostradamus said it was uh, a hereditary gift that would die with him. Nostradamus was uh, one of a kind in his era. Uh, in the 16th century, he was certainly the most famous of the prophets. And today, 400 years later, we still heed his words. He would sit alone in his study at night. Uh, he'd had, uh, he had a brass tripod. He had a flame, and he would concentrate, and suddenly the divine power would enter him, and he'd be able to make his predictions. What are the odds of these predictions coming to pass? There's something more concrete that might help us understand his prophetic accuracy, the science of mathematics. Nostradamus' prophetic verses are studied with dates, names, and bits of information. If we take one of his less dramatic prophecies and break it down, we may get some insight into his prophetic accuracy. This prophecy concerns an actual treaty signed in the late 1700s, 200 years after the prophet's death. Nostradamus predicted the year, the month, and two locations, Persia and Turkey. Four correct guesses or something more. One translator of Nostradamus, Stuart Robb, commissioned a study of the odds of the prophet getting all of these facts correct. If we multiply and multiply again and again, we come up with this amazing figure. It appears Nostradamus did see the future. That future is our future as well, and there are interpretations of his unfulfilled prophecies that have grave implications for all of us. One of Nostradamus' most alarming pronouncements concerns the end of the 20th century when he predicts the coming of a king of terror and the beginning of the end of civilization as we know it. If today's headlines are any indication, this future may already be upon us. Though Nostradamus rarely used dates, the year 1999 has special meaning, but that is when he foresaw the final catastrophe. A fiery end, also foretold in the Bible. A day that has a sinister name. Armageddon, the end of mankind. Is that what the great prophet foretold? By studying his prophecies, it may be possible to find out. Nostradamus has been interpreted and misinterpreted for centuries. The code he used to record his visions has obscured their meaning. Perhaps his prediction of Armageddon suffers from the same misinterpretation. Perhaps. Armageddon, the end of mankind. Did Nostradamus see this apocalypse in our future? There's at least 12 prophecies where he lists uh, Famine, plague, blood, war, death through military hands, the great cycle comes to its finish. It's my opinion that he felt that the only way to wake us up is to scare us a little bit.
One of the major uh, events that we have to fear is the big war that's coming in 1999. That was one of the very few instances in which he gave an exact date. He does stay 1999, and he says there'll be a tremendous conflict. Nobody wants war, and our leaders are striving to protect us from war, but yet the course is almost inevitable that conflict will develop between the East and the West one way or another. In the great conflict in 19, 1999, he mentions uh, Russia, he mentions China, he mentions powers from the Mideast and powers from the Far East. In other words, it's a world conflagration. I don't want to stand in the year 1999 in July waving a dog-eared copy of my book as the nuclear ICBM contrails are coming down on the planet and say, see, I told you so. It, Nostradamus said that in July of 1999, the great king of terror would come and destroy the world. A lesson that recent history has taught us on just how carefully we should interpret these prophecies occurred in the 1930s and 40s when Nostradamus's words were used to justify the insane excesses of Adolf Hitler. Hitler himself is spoken of as a rise of Nazi power he describes the swastika as a bent iron cross. He described it uh, as a twisted cross that, uh, that destroy people, that annihilate people, uh, that come to power. And he described just where it would take place, right at the Danube. He speaks about the alliance between France and England. He talks about the cock of France and the lion of England. Hitler was familiar with the uh, writings of Nostradamus, and he used his, uh, he used these really for his propaganda purposes. Hitler uh, used the great resources of uh, Goebbels and his propaganda ministry to drop leaflets over France in 1940 to show how their own countryman Nostradamus predicted the fall of France, which in fact he actually did. I have also heard that he wouldn't make any major moves without consulting what Nostradamus had said. Didn't help him very much in the end, though. <laughs> As the Nazis learned when their corrupt empire fell, the prophecies can be interpreted in many ways, and their misreading can lead to them becoming self-fulfilling or worse. Many people have taken Nostradamus's prophecies and claimed that they uh, predict anything that's convenient for them. So many times people look at prophecy uh, almost as an entertainment, like we're looking at the future, this is going to happen in the future. As far as I'm concerned, if prophecy is not used to show us where we're going in this moment so that we can change it, then it's worthless. Today, Nostradamus is remembered the world over for words that may define our destiny. In Salon, in France, his grave lies undisturbed. The mortal remains of a man whose words remain immortal, a man who may have pushed back the boundaries of time and space. I think one of the most interesting things about reading uh, the complete prophecies of Nostradamus and studying his prophecies is to try to understand what Nostradamus meant by time itself and what time is. It's a testament to his personal failure in his mission that he has become so accurate, so famous, because we remain so predictable. The true meaning of Nostradamus's prophecies can be argued. But no matter what we read into his words, they force us to question our definition of time itself. How can anyone predict what lies ahead? Is it possible for us to take the same journey into our own future? God does not throw dice, said Albert Einstein. Now, many people believe in the inevitability of what was, is, and will be. The future witnessed by Nostradamus may already exist somewhere around the bend of Time's River. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity forced us to reconsider our definition of time. He believed it was elastic and could slow down and speed up. Einstein brought us into a new age of science, a new age pioneered by men like Edgar Mitchell one of the select few human beings who have walked upon the moon. The issue of the predictability of the future 
goes right to the heart of the question of what is the nature of the universe. One answer to it is that people who can predict the future can only accurately do so in a very short time frame ahead of the present. And there seem to be people that do that very well. Now, it is interesting that uh, some individuals, like Nostradamus, seem to hit upon some events way, way in the future. If one is intuitive, one can guess or intuit what a near-term future event will be. We have all experienced deja vu, a moment when we feel that we have lived out something before. There are moments of extreme crisis. When time literally stands still, these feelings are an accepted part of everyday life. Imagine an extraordinary mind like Nostradamus's. Perhaps through mystical arts long since forgotten, he was able to push his subconscious forward in time, an incredible journey which he recorded for posterity. And maybe, just maybe, that gift lies dormant inside us all. Can we see into the future? Perhaps. These timepieces may be chains shackling us to the present, trapping us in the here and now. But the human mind may be capable of transcending the physical limitations of time. Can ordinary people experience visions of the future? This woman has built a career on one such vision. One moment when the future became crystal clear. Her name is Jean Dixon, and her vision described a man who would have a glorious rise and a violent fall. For in 1956, Jean Dixon predicted the assassination of John Kennedy, a vision documented in a contemporary magazine article. How did this vision come to pass? So many people ask me about the assassination of our young president. They called it a prediction, but it was not a prediction. It was a prophecy. I remember that day so well. The whole assassination was revealed to me as though it were a motion picture. The coffin being brought to the White House and that a young man, a Democrat, would be seated in 1960, very clearly, as though it were a motion picture. Though she correctly foretold this tragic event, Dixon has often been wrong in her forecasts. Why is prophecy so unpredictable? If we were to make a survey, which we have done, of the predictions of most psychics, the further you get away from the present into the future, the less reliable they are. And they're not terribly reliable on events, uh, on the time and place of things. I misinterpret sometimes because I just misinterpret my symbols. Can we, should we, take prophets and their predictions as law? Nostradamus had an answer to that question too. His words may point the way to a future beyond even his imagination. The dangers in misreading a prophecy can be tragic. For example, the high priests of the Aztecs foretold the coming of a white god from the east. And in 1518, someone did arrive a figure welcomed and worshipped like a god. He was Cortes the Conqueror, and he soon wore out his welcome, enslaving the very same priests who had predicted his arrival. Could we be in danger of misinterpreting Nostradamus' prophecy about Armageddon? Just how seriously should we take the words of this seer? We should pay attention to Nostradamus and his writings, because many things that he predicted during his lifetime came true during his lifetime. Many things that he predicted after he died have come true. And also many things that he predicts that are yet to come true should be heeded and paid attention to based upon his track record. Nostradamus's predictions are of things that are to happen. That does not mean, however, that these things have to happen. I, after all this time, looking at often many ghastly possibilities about our future, remain an optimist because I feel that our change can happen right now. As the old Eastern proverb says, one small candle of light can dispel the darkness of ages. 
By every account, Nostradamus believed our era to be a crossroads where the violent ways of the past would burn out in one last fiery storm, ushering in a new era of peace and contentment. Nostradamus regarded his visions as a warning, not an epitaph. Many of them have come to pass. Many have not. Peace or the final war. We don't need a prophet to tell us what to do. The choice is ours. Secrets and Mysteries presents information based in part on theories and opinions, some of which are controversial. The producer's purpose is not to validate any side of an issue, but through the use of actualities and dramatic recreation, relate a possible answer, but not the only answer, to this material.